To begin our Sunrise Smart Start, some breaking news overnight. A 45-year-old Rochester woman has been arrested after allegedly assaulting another woman on East Ave. This happened after 11 p.m. last night. Police say that they found a 56-year-old woman with minor cuts to her wrists and after a physical altercation happened with another woman, which they knew. The victim was treated at the scene and the suspect faces charges for felony assault. Well, new this morning, and we do expect more information happening later today, a homicide investigation is underway right now. Police promise us an update after a fire in Irondequoit revealed multiple people's bodies inside of a home Saturday morning. Irondequoit police tell us that in the next few hours, we will learn more about this very disturbing discovery. It shut down a portion of Knapp Avenue for nearly 18 hours on Saturday, and this has left the neighborhood certainly on edge. Just before 5.30 Saturday morning, three separate fire agencies responded to the scene of that house fire on Knapp in Irondequoit. The fire crews tell us they were able to get the flames under control fairly quickly, but then they soon discovered something very unexpected. As we were searching the house uh, after it was safe, uh, we found um, several individuals inside the house that were uh, obviously deceased. Uh, that was Rondequoit PD Chief Scott Peters. He tells us they are treating this as a homicide due to the, quote, sensitivity of what's going on. Now, the families in the neighborhood told News 8 they were too scared to go on camera, but this is normally a very quiet street. Chief Peters says there is no danger to their safety. I hate to use the term, it's an isolated incident, um, but this was not a random act. There's no fear for their safety. Um, we'll be here all night. Um, even after we're done breaking down the scene, we're going to make sure that we have uh, marked uh, police presence uh, just so the neighbors are, can kind of feel a little bit of uh, safety. Police say that presser with updates will happen at noon today. News 8 will be there and we'll bring you the latest details on air and online at rochesterfirst.com. All right, we want to take a break and get to this morning forecast here, James. We're fully in sunrise. It is beautiful over Sodus Bay. Yeah, it is. Uh, but I wouldn't say today is necessarily a beach day. It's a uh, bit cold. Sure, yeah, right. So especially if you're trying to go swimming with a water oh, temperature. Oh, yeah, too warmer chilly. Than the air temperature, uh, that sky, though, not bad at all. Maybe it's a hike uh, to the Chimney Bluffs, something like that. Uh, really should be a good day to uh, just uh, kind of get that heart rate up maybe on this Labor Day. Maybe we're going to a parade this morning. So many towns having great local parades. Those are always fun. Honey, I Falls 51, Batavia 53, uh, Hilton, you're at 64. Starting temperature we will eventually get into the mid 60s this afternoon. No chance for any rain for you today. When that chance of rain goes up, how long the sunshine can last, we'll do the eight day forecast at the end of the show, Michaela. Thank you so much, James. Maybe you're going to be getting out to the New York State Fair. Bit of a do over because uh, reports of a shooting shut down the fairgrounds early last night. Those were fake reports. According to state troopers, they confirmed there is no truth to indicate any shooting or violence happened at the fairgrounds. This despite several rumors and a rush of people scared enough to run away from the concert at Suburban Park last night. The rumors spread in part due to social media. And again, there was no truth to any of it. Police say at least three calls were made to either the 911 centers or the state fair security dispatch, triggering an investigation though so far no evidence has arisen. We're trying to determine exactly why we want someone would report this. We don't know if they were they thought they heard shots fired if they were thinking that that's what they heard but reality was there's no evidence of any type of shooting that occurred in the fairgrounds. And again those state fairgrounds will open as normal scheduled for its final day today. The Rochester Police Department's homicide unit asks for the public's help to find a murder suspect. Officers say on the evening of August 27th, 43 year old Malika Bruner was found stabbed to death in her home on Hazelwood Terrace. Officials have now identified the suspect as 49 year old Walter Belgum Jr. Police say Belgum is six foot two, weighs about 180 pounds. This is his photo here on the screen. You can see he's got that scar there under his right eye. Police urge anyone with any information, call the number we have provided for you here on your screen. There's also a cash reward for any information leading to Balcom's arrest. We've now learned the name of the inmate who was found unconscious in a Monroe County jail cell over the weekend and unfortunately passed away. According to jail deputies, 35 year old Anthony Ford from Ogden was found unresponsive at 8 a.m. Saturday morning. Despite life saving efforts, Ford did not survive. His cause of death is yet to be determined. An MCSO says Ford was initially only sentenced to uh, have a few weekends in jail. He was screened by a medical provider before his arrival the weekend of August 30th, as is jail protocol.
we'll look for updates on that story. Further news, a hit and run in Rochester has police looking for the person responsible. RPD says they found a 33-year-old man on Upper Falls Boulevard Saturday after being hit by a car, and it does appear that striking vehicle took off. The man was rushed to the hospital and is expected to survive, though again, more information is needed if you think you know anything. Please call 911. Outrage and mourning internationally as Israeli forces have recovered the bodies of six hostages held by Hamas. Among them, an Israeli-American Hirsch Goldberg Polin. President Biden released a statement saying that he was, quote, devastated and outraged by the news. Tens of thousands of Israelis hit the streets, pressuring Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to reach a ceasefire deal. Those protests also continuing here in our area. Members of the Rochester community say they are not only mourning the losses of these hostages, killed these individuals. There were also six others reportedly killed two weeks ago. So a vigil held by Temple Beth L, a candlelight vigil remembering those lives lost. They're further voicing concerns, trying to call for an end to the conflict. Organizers at last night's remembrance say they are remembering and fighting for the return of the 101 hostages still being held in that region. So many people behind the scenes who put the vigil together, they share their insights with News 8. The collective message they hope that the greater Rochester community will take in. The call to action I would say is for everyone to speak up, to show solidarity. If you um, can speak to your elective officials, if you can reach out to a member of the Jewish community just to show your support, if you can post on your social media, do whatever you can so that we can both raise awareness and support the families of the hostages that are, are suffering since October 7th. It's uh, unfortunate that this is what brought us together. But I think that we all feel so isolated when these things are happening. And it's so important for all of us to come together and feel that we have the support of a community. Yeah, that organizer there further says she believes this is a humanitarian crisis and the suffering on both sides should end. Students are going to be going back to class in just a few days, some as early as Wednesday or Thursday. Well, this year, they might be doing so without those cell phones. Several districts across New York State are changing policies on restricting phone use during the day. For example, interim principal of Jeff Middle School, that in the capital region, uh, Jim McHugh, implemented this policy last school year for students to have their phones out of sight, preferably locked away during the school day in their lockers. McHugh reminds them there is a phone in every classroom to get in contact with students at any time if the students need to reach their parents or guardians. Through several surveys, McHugh claims that his cell phone ban gained favorability among more than 900 students and families. People don't realize the apps and the things that are on the phone, how many times that phone vibrates in a student's pocket. Uh, those are all things that distract the student from being engaged in the teaching and learning process and then wondering what's on the phone. Yeah, he further says that the students performed better academically, socialized more, and had fewer incidents of inappropriate behavior. Well, as we're talking about getting back to school, the last few weeks locally packed with back-to-school cookouts, bashes, supply giveaways, and there's still more to come. A reminder here, Rochester City School District classes start for students this Thursday, September 5th, and many school districts in our area, they also need job positions filled. RCSD, for instance, has several openings, mainly teaching positions in language arts. If you are interested in learning more details about job opportunities, RCSD and CPAC will have a special education resource fair this Saturday, September 14th. Uh, well, not this Saturday, that's in a couple Saturdays. There's also a Rock the Block event happening September 25th and the Department of Labor hosting a job fair October 10th. That's quite a lot to get to. More information on these job openings and your district's first day of schools, all of that can be found on rochesterfirst.com. Click on over to our local news section. Union representatives and the city of Rochester plan to celebrate their annual Labor Day conference and parade today. Several local unions, community organizations, politicians, and candidates all participating in the event. They are going to be showing their support for our hard-working workers. Uh, the local labor community will host a press conference at the NYSET building at 10 a.m. Then right afterwards, the Labor Day parade will make its way down East Ave and Union Street towards Main Street and the Liberty Pole. It's going to be quite a nice day for that parade, James. Plenty yes. of sunshine. You're not going to have umbrellas blocking your view of the parade. Mm -hmm. Maybe just bring a jacket or a hat. 
Yeah, a little breezy uh, for yeah. you. Uh, could be some winds uh, 20, 10 to 20 miles per hour. So mm -hmm. note that as we're kind of changing our air masses from uh, one that gave us 80s in the afternoons to uh, one that's giving us 60s. So high temperatures today really only get to a mid 60s, some spots 64, 65, but generally we'll say 67 degrees. Sunshine lasts in the next couple of days. Uh, many kids starting school tomorrow. Wednesday, really the big day across the region, but uh, you know, it's plus or minus a few days depending on your district. Uh, low is going to be in the 50s and then eventually 80s by Thursday. Next chance for rain does come Friday night into Saturday. It does look like off and on showers, maybe a storm or two on Saturday, but ideally it's gone uh, by Sunday when we're heading to Orchard Park for the Bills game week one there, uh, kicking off the season. Oh, that's going to be so nice, especially that first day of school. That bus stop forecast is yeah. going to be coming back into your Chilly. rotation. Yeah, 79, sunny, new beginnings all around. Yeah, so you wear the jacket in the morning and then just don't forget it on the way home because you won't need it because <laughs> it's going to be so warm. That's true. That's true. I was the kid that always forgot my jackets uh, and my cubbies and yeah. things like that. Well, thank you so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Have a great Labor Day. News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, X, and on our app for news and weather.